So now that we've got some sample data, let's talk about data binding. Now, when you do data binding in Blend, you're actually able to come over here to any particular control. And let's look at this before we get to the sample data so we can get a sense of what this is like. So if I'm looking at this text box, I could come down to any property I want to data bind. Make this a tad wider. And of course, text is a common place to data bind. I can go ahead and click this advanced options pop up and actually say data binding right here. So here we can data bind the text that we want. Now if I have some data fields in our sample data, we'll look at this in a minute and see where we can actually use them. We could also do a binding directly to some other element, or in this case we're going to use data context. Data context is going to say whatever the context for this control, let's go ahead and do data binding here. And I'm going to select use a custom path expression because I'm going to say whatever the object I'm bound to, let's go ahead and use name. And if I open up this little advanced properties, I can decide some other things. This is one time, one way or two way binding, what value converter, if there's any already in the project, even things like update source. Now, all of the options you have for data binding are not here. Most of them are, especially the ones you're going to need during design time, but there's still going to be a big case for actually editing these by hand. So let's go ahead and say, okay, we can see that it has added the data binding object here and specified the two-way for us. If we needed to do something different here, we can go ahead and add it here like notify on exceptions, right? We could add other binding phrases here. Now the data binding IntelliSense doesn't work in Blend, but it will in Visual Studio, of course. So if you're used to doing that. When looking at the property panel here, we can also see what objects are data bound because they have this gold color around them. Notice the text has disappeared because it doesn't know what we're data binding to. It can't guess what we're data binding to, but it's turned it this golden color to indicate this is data bound. So we can tell what fields are data bound directly here. We won't be able to type into text unless we get rid of the data binding but we'll be able to see very quickly that this is a data bound property. Let's go back to our sample data and talk a little bit more about that. Since we want to take this information here in games, most likely what we're going to want to do at runtime is take this list of games and put it in our list box, which is over here. What we can actually do is just grab this and drag it. And we can see here it says data bind to the item source of games. That's a pretty common way to do this. And so if we drop it in, it's actually going to produce, let's go ahead and zoom in a little. A data template for each item. So let's see what this actually looks like. I'm going to run this for a moment. And we'll see that that sample data is actually shown up here at runtime in the running application. And it's also taken a data template so that different pieces of information we have here, we can actually use for the data template of our object. Now this isn't formatted very well, let's try to guess based on the order of those fields, so just put this in here. This means that if we take the list box here, we can actually edit this data template by looking down into the list and say, edit additional templates and edit current item template. What this is going to do is actually show us what that template is right here in place. And we can see when we look back at properties that it, what it has done is create these individual objects and then it's using data binding to define what they are. So let's go into data binding. And we can see that it's picking it from the data context. Because the blend knows that this game item is the data context, it's actually picking it directly here. We still have the power to go ahead and change some of the behavior of the data binding down here, like whether it's one way or two way or one time. In this case, one way is the correct thing we want. So we're not actually going to change anything here. But again, there's some of the data binding properties that don't exist. So let's come in here and let's do some design work by just saying that the name is going to be bolded and maybe the release date is going to be smaller. Let's go ahead and make this about 10, just so it always fits. Now we have that problem with the price here, it says 79, 46. It's not a useful name, but it is a number, so we should be able to change the data binding. But again, because not all data binding attributes are accessible through the UI, 
you tend to come here and actually make those edits. So we come here, we can see here's that data template it created for us, the text block, and there's the price. So let's go ahead and just put string format equals C for currency. Go back into the designer, and we're now seeing that we're actually getting the price for these. Make sense? So let's extend this a little. Let's go ahead and make this whole thing fit again. Because we want to extend what is happening with the data binding here. We not only want to data bind what's in the list box, we'd really like to data bind what's here. So how do we do that? So a couple of ways to do it. One of the ideas with the data context is we could actually use these buttons up here to say, do I want to go ahead and create a details mode by grabbing this and going ahead and creating a bunch of objects based on that details mode? Let me make sure it's selected. And this will attempt to go ahead and, and do this for us, but this is honestly not exactly what we want. Usually what we're going to want is actually to look at the structure of what we have here. To go back to the list. We want to actually bind the editor to some part of the UI. In this case, we want to bind it to an element. So let's use the search and say data context. Here's our data context. And I'm going to actually use data binding here. More importantly, element property binding to say the data context for my editor is going to be the list, and I'm going to pick the property of the list. And what is that property going to be? In our case, that's going to be selected item. So whatever item is selected in the list box will now become the context for everything in that editor container. Because earlier we had created the data binding for name, it should work. Let's go ahead and run this real quick. And we'll see now that when we select something here, the whole container here is getting this individual game item as the element. And so our name is showing up here. As we change it here, we're doing all the change of that data directly in that data binding. In fact, so let's complete the process here. Let's go to price. Get rid of this. And let's go ahead and do the text binding here. And in this case, it knows the object it's bound to, so I can just select price. And in fact, over here, I could do the same here for release date. So over on our data tab, I can actually do this. Instead of picking it here from the sample data, I'm going to actually look at the data context down here. This is where it knows what the object I'm bound to. In this case, it's going to be anything in the collection. And I can go ahead and just grab release date and set it there.